Hey, B Third Man, Coach Field here, and we are back for a new lesson. My hope is that as we move and we journey through, um, we can do some of these in podcast form. I want to get Coach Modis involved. It's just been a crazy fall semester this year. Um, basketball season has kicked off for me. I'm sure you're busy in your own life as we approach, um, quickly approach Thanksgiving, and then we're going to travel into Advent season. It's going to be off, and the holiday of Christmas is going to pick up. And so we're kind of at an exciting time of the year. And this week, we're coming out of um, Charity Week, and we are into prudence. So the last three weeks, we spent studying the theological virtues of faith, hope, and charity, and now we are going to move into what we call the cardinal virtues, and the first of which that we are going to study is prudence. But before we take the next step, one of the things that I noticed as I edited the lesson for last week, I really missed out on something when it comes to charity, and so I just want to take a minute real quick to just touch on it. You know, charity um, perfected our why. It was something that, you know, we could give in benevolence so we could give of our treasure. But one of the things that I think I failed to mention was it's also about fraternal correction. And so how do we correct our neighbor? How do we hold our fellow Christian men and women accountable? How do we correct our children? How do we challenge our spouse? So this idea of I am going to um, correct in a positive way, in a charitable way, the people that God puts in my life so that I can help them grow in holiness. And in fact, if I sit by and I watch them go down a path that I know is unhealthy and potentially sinful, it's me being uncharitable. And I wanted to mention that, but I think it's a good kickoff um, to prudence because prudence is essentially wisdom in action. And I believe we've mentioned it before, but if we haven't, a lot of our virtues that we learn in a Christian light are from Thomas Aquinas. And what Thomas Aquinas did is he took Plato and Aristotle, these great thinkers, and he brought them into the Christian age. Thomas Aquinas was a monk who lived in the 1200s, one of the most brilliant minds um, in church history. And this week, we are going to dive deep into what his lesson is on prudence. So Coach Modest says, wisdom in action. And Thomas Aquinas says it this way. He says, right reason in action. And he teaches us that there's three components to prudence. So essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to become good, holy decision makers. And this is important to us as men because most of us are in leadership positions. At the bare minimum, which we cannot see as minimum, we're the leaders of our households. We're, we're called to bring our wife and our children to Jesus. And so we need to be men of great prudence. So these three components of prudence, um, Thomas Aquinas would say they are counsel, judgment, and command. But to help you remember them, I'm going to teach this in the same way we teach our athletes in B3rd Athletics because I think it's easier to remember. And as men, most of us grew up playing sports. It'll be super relatable to our life experiences. And so let's start with the first one. Let's start with counsel. The first step in growing in the virtue of prudence is getting good counsel, and we would say counsel is coaching. So the challenge is always, who is coaching you? Where are you getting your counsel? First and foremost, I hope that you're getting your counsel in the scriptures. You know, hopefully you're being counseled by people within your church, your pastor, your priest, your friends in your Bible study group. For a lot of us, we get good counsel also from our spouse, that intimate relationship that God has called us to. And it's really important that we receive this coaching and this counsel in a very positive way. We're not resistant to it. We don't become uncoachable people, which we know we have the tendency to do between the age of 25 and 60. We, we tend to struggle 
with the humility to be coached. So step one in growing in the virtue of prudence is counsel slash coaching. So then what do we do with this counsel and this coaching? Well, step two is judgment or decision-making. In every stage of our life, we are left with this crossroads. You know, I can take this choice, I can take this choice, this fork in the road, and this is where we're trying to balance out our choices. And there are times in our life where we get to do this very slowly, you know, especially when it comes to who God is calling us to marry. I, I date, I go through the court courting process of potentially my future bride, and as we get to know each other, I'm using the virtue of prudence to go, hey, is this who God is calling me to spend the rest of my life with here to help her grow in holiness, have her help me grow in holiness, and to create a family and raise that family uh, with Jesus as the centerpiece? That's probably one of the biggest decisions we make, but each and every day, we face little decisions. And sometimes those are rapid. You know, we, we might have to make a quick decision on something. And so as we grow in prudence, we can kind of go through these actions a, a lot faster. And so the second step, judgment or decision-making, is after we receive the coaching, we take that coaching and we look at our options. And then third, it comes time to make a final decision or what he would say, command, and we would say action. We've got to take action. And what's interesting is we're part of a faith that you know requires us to take action. We're not called to sit back and just say, hey, Jesus, you do it all. Let me watch you work. No, he wants us to cooperate with him. He wants us to be in relationship with him. And so we have to take this counsel and this coaching that we've gotten we have to look at our options, and then we have to be men of action. We've got to decide, hey, this is what we're going to do today, and, and this is the best course of action. This is the best choice for us in our life or for me in my life, and it's a prudent decision. What we're going to see in the scriptures this week is we're going to see examples, especially starting in the Old Testament. We're going to see Solomon who is trying to take over his kingdom with uh, of his father David, and he feels the burden of this. Hopefully what you do when you read this passage is it kind of you know shows you like, yeah, you have a big burden as a husband and a father. You are called to lead your home. And I wonder, would all of us choose wisdom and discernment as the choice if God said, hey, I'll give you anything you need to do this job well. We see Solomon say, hey, I want to be a prudent king. I want to be a quality leader. So as we move throughout the week, I want you to really take time each and every day. Pray that you're a little bit more aware of the decisions that come up in your life this week. Reflect back on some decisions that you've made in the past and say, was I potentially not, not prudent in making that choice? How do I learn from that experience? Use the virtue of prudence to make a better choice moving forward. Because here's what I want to end with. I think there's a little bit of confusion as we um, have grown in our Christian walk that when we become Christian, we tend to lose our free will, and we kind of have no ability to reject God's desire for our life, and that is just not true. We see it over and over again in Scripture. We see it happening in our own lives. God desires us to be in relationship with Him, but sin is a rejection of God's will. God would never call us to sin. So when we sin, it's us choosing ourselves. It's not us being third. It's us loving the world instead of loving God above all things. And so this week, let's pray for prudence. I'll be praying for you. Please pray for me. And let's pray that we as men, 
become more prudent in how we live our own life so that then we can call all of our neighbors and our coworkers and the people that are in our lives to the same virtue of prudence so that when we all make decisions, imagine a world, how different things would be if our government leaders, if our church leaders, if the people within their domestic home, the fathers in the priesthoods of their home would make good and prudent choices where Jesus was put first, all people were put above themselves, and they sought to always be third. It's going to be a great week. Prudence is an amazing virtue and a great way to kick off our cardinal virtue study over the next few weeks. It's great to be with you. Thanks. God bless.